Hello everyone, welcome to online.co.in. In this presentation, I'll be discussing the basics of the pulmonary blood flow. That is, in this topic, I'll be discussing the anatomy of the pulmonary circulation, the factors which control the pulmonary blood flow, and the physiological aspects of the pulmonary blood flow. Now, the pulmonary blood flow consists of two circulations. One is the high pressure, low flow circulation. And the second one is the low pressure, high flow circulation. Now, in the high pressure and low flow circulations, we have got the bronchial arteries, which are the branches of thoracic aorta. And they flow at a pressure that is slightly lower than the aortic pressure. That's why they are called high pressure. And they supply the trachea, the bronchial tree, the supporting tissues of the lung and the outer coats of the pulmonary arteries and vein. They don't provide much of the pulmonary blood flow, but they provide at a high pressure. That's why they are called a high pressure and low flow. Whereas the next one, they are the low flow and the low pressure and the high flow. They are the pulmonary arteries, which supplies the venous blood from all parts of the body to the alveolar capillaries. The basic purpose of this pulmonary circulation is to help in oxygenation and removal of the carbon dioxide. So you have two circulations. One is high pressure, which is the bronchial artery and the low pressure, which are the pulmonary artery. Now, coming to the pulmonary vessels, the pulmonary artery extends 5 cm beyond the apex of the right ventricle and divides into the right and the left main branches. That is the right main pulmonary artery and the left main pulmonary artery to supply the respective lungs. The wall thickness of these pulmonary vessels is usually one third of the aorta, but their diameters are larger than the counterpart systemic arteries. Since their wall thickness is only one third aorta, they have a very good compliance. They can accommodate a large amount of pulmonary blood flow. And it is seen that the compliance of these pulmonary vessels is similar to that of the entire systemic tree. Now, if you look at the pulmonary vessels, you can have the pulmonary veins and you have the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary veins are also short and they are also highly compliant like the pulmonary arteries. And these pulmonary veins drain into the left atrium. Now, this is a picture showing the pulmonary trunk, which is divided into the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery, and they are supplying the respective segments of the tracheobronchial tree. And once the blood gets oxygenated from the pulmonary arteries, it enters the pulmonary vein and from there into the left atrium and into the left ventricle, and it supplies the whole body. Now, the second component, which are the high pressure but the low flow. They are the bronchial vessels. They are the small bronchial arteries which arise from the systemic circulation. They provide only 1-2% to 2 of the cardiac output. And unlike the pulmonary artery which supplies deoxygenated blood from the right atrium and the right ventricle, these bronchial vessels, they supply oxygenated blood. And they supply the supportive tissues of the lung. Now, from the bronchial arteries, the blood enters the bronchial veins. And from the bronchial veins, through the bronchopulmonary anastomosis, the blood enters the pulmonary vein and from the pulmonary vein, it enters the left atrium rather than going into the right atrium and the right ventricle. So, it is seen that the flow into the left atrium and the left ventricle is 1-2% to 2 greater than the right ventricular output because from the right ventricle, only the pulmonary trunk arises. But from the left ventricle, the blood which is coming into that is from the pulmonary artery as well as from the bronchial veins. That's why the saturation never reaches 100 millimeters of mercury. That's why the PaO2 never reaches 100 millimeters of mercury on room air in a normal ABG. It's because of the mixture of the deoxygenated blood from the bronchial veins along with the oxygenated blood from the pulmonary veins, which thereby brings the PaO2 from 100 millimeters of mercury to, let's say, 99.5 or 99, 99 millimeters of mercury.